Hello. Yeah. When I was a child, Dad and I used to play this little fun game. He used to ask me to stare at this particular object or pictures or probably some uh, spaces for a minute or two. And when I turned to him, he asked me 10 questions. If I get seven or more right, I got myself rewarded. Maybe a Barbie doll or a chocolate or some toy that I might have demanded at that point of time. Or money to buy the toys. But then, there my observation skills were getting better. My father used to make it difficult each time, but uh, I want to get that, that reward and I want to get those seven questions right. So each time, that happy feeling, it was addictive. But also at the same time, there were days that I never used to get those rewards, or I never used to get those seven questions right. I still enjoyed playing that little game. The lesson learned was to enjoy the process and not just the reward. So now that I have my observation skills uh, well established, well, I also wanted to play more games for more rewards. It was like one game and just one reward. I wanted to play more games for more rewards. But I was also wise enough to make my father choose a game that I would win. So that was another lesson that I learned. Understanding your strength and weakness and creating opportunities that you can win. So at that point of time, I, I think I've, I've started approaching life with an attitude of a player. Win or lose, I was ready to play the game. Okay, swiftly moving ahead, I graduated from a med school and Gazillion Doctors were launched each year by good and bad med school. I'm a product of one. And, uh, but when I graduated, I was, I was very sure of the fact that I wouldn't fit into the system. I was not ready to practice a prescribed system or a set of rules only because I wanted that sort of a freedom to contribute to the system. I, was, I needed to be sure whatever it is, every day had to be fresh and new and exciting and challenging. No, no not, not that doctor's job is not challenging. Of course, it is very challenging, but I want a little more freedom to contribute to the system. Well, the realization has hit me. Um, there is this, I remember, I clearly remember those days where I felt that I have hit a, a, a dead end. So what next? What do I do next? To make matters worse, I remember my, my friends or my colleagues from uh, med school used to call me up during those days and say, hey, listen, I, I have gotten into this prestigious college and I've gotten myself into surgery, radiology, pediatrics, and that one last question before they dropped the call. Um, so so what, what did you do? When, what have you chosen for yourself? Very embarrassing. Um, the pressure was real. The pressure was damn real. But that's the next lesson I learned. The pressure is a trick. It takes your focus away. It also, it also makes you want to feel that you want to take a normal path. But today I can say that it is okay not to take a normal path. Um, don't self-doubt. You know, you, you are made to, um, you're built for bigger and better things. So at that point of time, I know that this is it. I had to do something, but I didn't know what. It was around that time, I had a family holiday in USA, and I happened to see some cosmetology clinics. Well, I have this particular cosmetology clinic in my mind where um, I know that I, that was this clinic that I got ex exposed to lasers and peels and Botox, and doctors were heading it. They were in charge of it, very fancy looking doctors. Everything about that place was very fancy. I went up to them and quite a couple of, you know, I took, took some pamphlets and uh, I even managed to get an appointment the next day. I knew this was an opportunity, uh, an opportunity I was not willing to miss. It's a lesson I feel I should be saying this, listen to your gut, it always works. So, but I also understood the fact that a cosmetology is just not a doctor headed thing, it was um, a business too. Not formally being trained in business and an undergraduate in medicine, 
I did not know how to build a system. I did not know how to set up a process to run a business. Uh, I was completely unaware of a lot of things that I now know. I gathered all the information. Um, I wrote down my skills that I have developed and I started analyzing it, strategizing it and understood the fact that I need a new set of skills to play this new game. As a result, I got myself enrolled to MSc Dermatology in London at the prestigious uh, King's University. I was with the NHS. I flew to USA to get my cosmetology and cosmetic chemistry degree and then I went to Singapore for my internship. I also did some workshops in the Middle East. The point is, the same old little fun game, what my father taught me, observe. I wanted to observe what, what was there in the US, what was there in the uh, Europe, what was there in the Middle East and Asia and Southeast. What did the world demand? What was the culture of beauty on the world map? Well, I wanted to know that precisely to curate one for myself. Well, I, I quite understood how this works and I have also curated my own methodology. The next big decision, where do I start? Well, um, the decision was, should I be starting something in USA or Singapore where the cosmetology business was already well established or is it that I want more challenges? Because I love, personally I love challenges. Because every time I took up a challenge, I also felt that I, as a person, also grew. I also learned a new skill. So I love challenges, and I also wanted to start things from the scratch, build an industry, and get to see how much I learn the process. The answer is obvious. Here I am. I started off uh, in this God's own country. Very challenging. Well, in fact, uh, I'm totally enjoying the process. Little by little, piece by piece, I started putting my vision. In a way, it made sense to me. Well, some mistakes, trial and errors. I started rectifying little mistakes and I started moving ahead in a speed I felt we were ahead of the game. Um, in fact, all throughout, I believe Nike. Just do it. So in fact, when I want to set up my infrastructure, started strategizing things for my own. I was at a speed that I did not realize there were certain mistakes that I was making. In fact, that little game that I played in my childhood, I was also taught to take a pause, look back, and see if my strategy was really working for me. Many of you here, in fact, must have played some games at some point of your time and must have realized when your eyes are so focused um, on, your, on your game, your mind tends to slip off. So there has been certain, certain slips that way. And the biggest mistake I feel I can, I can admit that was my brand name. So in fact, uh, when I want to set up my clinic here, I did a quick survey to understand what was the cosmetology concern um, in Kerala. And the most asked one was hair fall, and to become fair. And I was very creative to put my brand names Hair Fair. Okay, so I know that I'm very creative and I was very happy with the way how things were moving forward. I was enjoying all the attention. Moving forward, I did not know the impact of this name till we started our e-commerce division. We started shipping our nutraceutical products worldwide. Uh, it was embarrassing when our uh, overseas clients started emailing us Hair Fair, really, a product from India. You want to ship it all across to us with a logo, Hair Fair, really? It was embarrassing, yes. I had to admit the fact that I was feeling awkward. So there was a pressure again. I had to focus. I had to take a pause and turn back and see what is that I made a mistake. I mean, as a team, I had to discuss and I had to get some well-wishers on board and say, is it really worth doing it? Mixed reviews, but I knew this name you, was about to restrict my growth and I had to change it. It was an overnight decision, I could say, um, a Herculean task. It was just not about changing the name of the brand. It was also about changing the culture. I wanted to, do, I wanted to be more empathetic. 
in fact, uh, that is because I, I in, in eight years of this, being in this industry, a lot of sad stories in my consultation room. Wives being avoided by husband for not looking good. Kids being bullied in the school for not looking a particular way or having a particular tone of uh, skin. People being feeling rejected because they feel that they don't fit into the uh, beauty standard. And I also felt, started to feel that the name hair fair started contributing to the feeling. I felt that I was not being socially responsible. There was, my intentions were right. I wanted a change in the right direction. I also felt that my strategy had great intentions, but it was not foolproof, which is where I decided to change the entire structure, rebuild everything that I have done all these years with the sole purpose to make a person feel I belong and therefore I am. You be thin, full figure, whatever tone, therefore I am. We do not want to come across or want to establish a beauty standard because the cream crowd, I think, is, we've been very lucky to have them as our clients. And thanks to social media being so popular, there was definitely a beauty standard coming out of our brand and I had to stop it which is exactly the reason why today I can proudly say that I had the strength to take a pause, understanding that that would delay my growth or delay my speed. Looking back and understanding that that's a mistake, going back and rectifying it and making sure that it's put in place for all of us to run. Today I feel learning the process, enjoying to learn the process, not just the reward, creating opportunities, making sure that I have so much of passion and that's been transferred to my team, hardworking consistently, also understanding the fact that uh, as and when you grow, because just because you did not take a normal path, you will also be criticized. And with the little games that I played, here I am today. Therefore, I am Dr. Nilofar. Thank you.